Hi everyone. Are you sick of us yet? So, I was going to start off this speech by saying that I recently read in an interview, but in all honesty, it was just one of those TikTok clips where a guy chases a random unsuspecting stranger down the street and just barrages him with the most existentialist questions. Um, clearly, journalism is alive and well. Thank you, the Oracle. Um, but bear with me here. It went a little like this. So the guy with the mic goes, how do you think other people perceive you? And this guy with his hands in his pockets and his hoodie over his head goes, I don't know, like the guy in the background? I remember watching this and my immediate reaction was, how could you think of yourself as the guy in the background? It was really profound to me, but I realized I wouldn't be so intrigued if it didn't ring at least a little bit true. Both the situation we were put into early in high school and also growing up in a digital era has led us all to become a little bit chronically online, or maybe that's just me, but my life soon became, what do I get to do when I finally get to leave my room or my laptop? I scoured the internet, I made Pinterest boards, I followed influencers, I made lists and I made goals, and it didn't feel negative, it felt inspiring. I'd spent time idealizing the type of person I wanted to become, putting pieces of others on a pedestal, and seeing my whole self, all the years I've lived to become who I am, as only a fraction of who I was supposed to be. Didn't that mean kind of the same thing? Was I not also a guy in the background, lurking in the shadows while I watched others light up rooms and run marathons and write novels? In the pursuit of self-actualization, I think I became a robot. Everyone that knows me knows that I pride myself heavily on only doing things I truly love, and choir is and has always been one of those things for me. I think it's the purest form of collective expression. I mean, I could go on about it for pages, and I have. But still, coming back from quarantine, I found myself trying to check things off a list, to build a resume, to do the things I thought I needed to do to become that person and fulfill those accomplishments I dreamed of when I was at home. After a late night choir rehearsal in a sea of seven years of choir rehearsals, one of the most trusted adults in my life pulled me aside and told me it was my expression that engaged and captivated an audience. And it may seem small or insignificant, but it really changed my worldview. I never had the best voice or was the smartest person in the room. My classmates can attest to that. But that recognition for something almost unconscious to me, something that I wasn't trying to control or manipulate to reach a certain benchmark, to pass a certain round of auditions, that moment of mentorship, it reoriented me to the reason I was in that room and doing this in the first place. The expression in my eyes and the glow in my face wasn't going to go on my resume, but in that moment, singing in that choir, that's who I am. And though no place is flawless, and our hustle culture has never failed to be brought up, I can wholeheartedly say that moments at Gunn have truly nurtured my authentic voice. English classes have inspired true and purposeful confidence rather than just speaking for the sake of speaking. Cold calling in chemistry was rough, but it learned, it, helped, it taught me how to fight for myself. So thank you, Mr. O'Connell, for that. Um, among the other amazing classroom experiences I've had here, I've learned the value of, I've learned to value the importance of thinking on the spot versus knowing all the answers. Asking myself, who are you now? What do you think right now? Today, if I were the one getting a camera shoved in my face, how would I think other people perceive me? Not as that girl in the background, but as someone who's unafraid to say what's on her mind. Not because of pride, but because of conviction. Someone who's always present. Someone whose eagerness and expression pours out of her eyes. Someone who's excited for right now. 
because I've realized that how people perceive you isn't the goals you plan for, the future marathons, the unwritten novels. It's the mood you're in when you go to bed at night. It's the face you show your peers when you say hi in the morning and the jokes that make everyone crack up in class. And I suppose this is where I'm supposed to say, go chase your dreams. And I do think you should, but I think I have a more important message for you. Love right now. Cherish what you have right now. Let the people around you in on the intangible magic that comes out of them. Do you know how much of others you see that they can't? Did you tell the kids you've gone to school with since kindergarten how much you love the way their nose scrunches when they smile? Did you mention to the guy you're always debating in your Socratic seminar how much you appreciate his quick wit? Look around and hug your friends and be the reason why someone you've grown up with realizes they're seen, that they're more than just their checklist. There are something like 500 of us graduates in the Gunn High School class of 2023 and not a single one of us is a guy in the background. Thank you.